In your quotation, you have the provision to allow for X amount of time externally for subcontract process. So at the point you send the job out, it knows, job's gone, starts counting down the expected time to come back. So it then knows an estimate of when the job will come back in for inspection, packing and so on. Key to an efficient machine shop is getting those jobs out on time. So you need a scheduler. Scheduler, scheduler? <laughs> Whichever you like. <laughs> okay, so we've got Jeff here from PSL Daytrack. And one of your modules or two of your modules is about scheduling your work? Well, certainly. So you've you've taken the job on, yep. you've got the process you've quoted, you've got to run that through the machine shop. Maybe it's going through one op, maybe it's going through multiple operations, maybe it's going out for subcon. Lots of elements you need to bring in to generate when, a, when an operation needs to start and finish to get the job out on time. Okay, so there's actually two, you've got two different modules, a work in progress and actual the, sh the scheduler? We have, yeah. So the full-blown scheduler will work on calculating start and end dates. Yep. You'll define your own resource in terms of the number of hours of machines available and so on. It will link to material availability within purchasing. So if material's delayed, it will take that on board and so on. Now that can, that's a very accurate process that runs through and there are countless feedback stories of people benefiting from that. However, if you're a smaller company and you're going from... Perfect example, just here on the screen at the moment, it's Phil from Miniature Manufacturing. Yeah, certainly. Um, and you may go from a paper-based system or a system with things on the wall. <laughs> yeah, he's got the fridge magnets, only different, <laughs> different colours, very technical. <laughs> certainly. If you go full-blown scheduling from that step, that could be too much. Work in progress is there to be an interim step where you don't have to calculate capacity or you don't have to look at capacity you've got available. It will look at the jobs you've got and say, right, this is what you need to do up to this point. If you're smaller, small number of machines, that's the level you want to go to. That can still be linked into a status board to give you that sequencing. Right, so you can have your, you can have your report as such, but then you can link some people more visual, so they have it as a status board with all, hopefully all, all, all green on there as well. But certainly that's the aim, but if it's red, you need to know. Yeah. And that's really what's what's key to it, giving you the, the problems as well you need to focus on. Again, we always say that, uh, we always ask this question in terms of the modules, how easy is it to use? Well, the feedback really comes from users in terms of what they say, but it is easy to use. It's, it's designed so it's a seamless process. You put the order on, the system automatically goes into the, the job automatically goes into the schedule. Um, next time you recalculate the schedule, which will be a daily task anyway to, to, to update based on any live orders. Um, you're going to see that job fitting on the schedule, appear on the status board when it needs to. You'll know you've got to, to purchase the material if you don't have it and so on. It's all, it's all fully integrated. So it's integrated and intuitive though. So I've got a job, say, the end of the month, but someone another job comes in which needs to be slightly before that. This will work it all out and, and rearrange. Certainly, that's the whole idea of it. It's not for you to pick and choose where you want to work on jobs. It's for the system to work on the basis of date criteria, job priority you've, you've assigned, which could be controlled based on the customer as well. And it will take all those factors into account to give you the optimum sequence that you should work through, whether you're scheduling based on what's achievable or just in time to work on what you should have done last week so you know how far behind you are. Right. Or how, how far ahead you are. Or, far, or how far ahead, yeah. <laughs> okay, but I've got someone on the phone shouting, I need that component straight away. Yeah, well then you can very quickly have a look to see where it's scheduled. If it's in progress, you can jump to the transaction, you can see how many you've made, how many are left to go and so on. So you can give them that, that feedback there and then rather than saying, oh, I'll call you back. Just give me a moment, tap, tap, tap. So it's an interactive system and it's always up to, up to date essentially, up to date, yeah. nice and simple. But what happens if I'm going external for your heat treatment, for example? Well, you've got to plan that into the... Oh, there's um, magnets, by the way, just so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to plan that into the whole process. So it's all well and good. Okay, you've machined it, brilliant. In your quotation, you have the provision to allow for X amount of time externally for subcontract process. So at the point you send the job out, it knows, job's gone, starts counting down the expected time to come back. So it then knows an estimate of when the job will come back in for inspection, packing and so on. So then you can chase them up as well if it hasn't come back from? Exactly, but you're chasing them up at the right time rather than if you like getting on their, getting on their backs when it's not warranted chase them up when the job is due. Okay, now a great example you mentioned here is Phil at Miniature Manufacturing with the work in progress, you've then got the scheduler. But another great example is Technoset mm -hmm. and Adam, they've got, I mean their system, these these guys are here relatively small. Technoset and, and the group is 25 in Hastings and 25 plus in the rugby site, but they've gone the whole hog with bar scanners and everything. They have to be honest, and I think you visited last year, Colin. Um, Impressive stuff. That was the start of a project to actually really digitalise the shop floor uh, in terms of extra screens and so on. And now the result is fabulous to be honest, in terms of the feedback from the shop floor, the visibility they've got from the status boards. It's really good to see. There you go. So there you have it. If you're a one-man machine shop up to a big machine shop, scheduling with PSL Daytrack will make you a lot more efficient. <laughs>